Welcome back to card80s.org. Today we're going to be continuing with personal identity. This is going to be a video on the psychological approach to personal identity. If you don't know what personal identity is or you want to find out more, you should check out my original video on the persistence question and personal identity. This is also the 96th video we have here at card80s.org. Keep your eyes peeled for the 100th video where we're going to be taking a look at Descartes' famous Cogito ergo sum, and how we can doubt even, I think, therefore, I am. But first, we have to go through personal identity. Now, the psychological approach has two different versions. There is the memory criterion and the causal dependence criterion. We're going to be taking a look at each of these in turn in this video. So, first off, the memory criterion. This is possibly the most intuitive version of personal identity that a lot of people walk into philosophy and thinking about personal identity having. So, a person is identical to another person if one of them remembers the experiences of the other. What does this look like? Basically, you in the present are identical to you in the past if you remember your past self. You remember the things that your past self did and so on and so forth. And you in the present are identical to you in the future if your future self remembers you. It doesn't make sense for us to be identical with something we don't remember or whose experiences we don't have in our minds, so the memory criterion seems like a pretty intuitive and commonsensical version of what personal identity is. There's also the causal dependence criterion. This is a little more complicated, but as we'll see in the objections, it avoids some of the problems of the memory criterion. The causal dependence criterion says one is psychologically connected to one's previous selves, even only if one's current mental states were caused by those previous mental states. In order to be identical to something according to the causal dependence criterion, you have to be psychologically connected to it, and you have to be psychologically continuous with something. One is psychologically continuous with one's previous selves, if and only if one is psychologically connected to them. So, you have to be connected to all of those previous selves going in a nice little causal dependent string in order to be identical to them. Basically, your mental states from before have to have caused your current mental states in an important way. Let's take a look at what this looks like. So, you in the present are identical to you in the past if your current mental states, your thoughts, feelings, beliefs, all that jazz, was caused by your past mental states. And you in the present are identical to you in the future if your future mental states will be caused by your current mental states. It doesn't make sense for us to be identical with mental states or thoughts that we weren't caused by, so that is the causal dependence criterion. As we see, I realize it's a little more complicated, but it's going to avoid a couple of the objections we'll pose to the memory criterion. So, that was the psychological approach. Next, we're going to be looking at a number of objections to the psychological approach to personal identity. Then we'll be checking out the somatic approach, where we take a look at how personal identity can be contained in body. I'll leave you with a quote on memory. Yesterday is but today's memory, and tomorrow is today's dream. Watch this video and more at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.